Well, good morning. It is, well, let me see, what is it? Saturday, July the 20th. And uh, it's a cloudy, little bit humid out, warm, but it was a nice fresh start. It's kind of, the warmth is creating more humidity. You can feel it in the air. Time to get up in the mountains, breathe some mountain fresh air. Shabbat Shalom. It is the Sabbath today. And uh, I'm going to take a restful, peaceful day today. Stay in the word of the Lord. Keep it holy. We're going into the beautiful King James Bible, the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, and this is chapter 14. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribe of Israel distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half-tribe. Don't forget, two and a half tribes remained on the east side of Jordan. For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half-tribe on the other side, Jordan. I guess I should have shut up and kept on reading. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in, with their suburbs, for their cattle and their suburbs. There's a fire truck going by. And the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Yehuna, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee and Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again, as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. <clears throat> And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. So he's now eighty-five. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And lo, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Eighty-five. And yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so my strength now, for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so, be the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jehunah, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jehunah, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron, Hebron before was Kirjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. Amen. Here you can see how God made a promise through Moses to Caleb and to Joshua about their lands, because Caleb and Joshua were the only two spies that came back and gave a positive report to the people about the land of milk and honey. All the others didn't. And, uh, they, you know, they, they worried the hearts of the people. 
but Joshua and Caleb were faithful. And we can see how Joshua's reward came. And now we can see how Caleb's reward is being manifested. God honors his promises to us. Never doubt the word of God. He always honors his promises. Okay, so don't think that something you can do will negate God's promises. There is no power on earth greater than God. You cannot negate God's promises. And as we see in the New Testament, a, prom a, a manifestation of promise is, is in the fact that Jesus says, the only way to the Father is through me. And that by our acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are guaranteed a place in heaven. That's the promise from God. And no man will separate us. No power on earth or in the heavens is greater than the hold that God has on us. So therefore, the teaching of once saved, always saved, stands. There is no power that can break that bond. Do not think that because of your sin nature and your sinful heart, that you can do something that will break the bond that you already made <coughs> with God. He will honor his promise. Now, do not think that you can go out and deliberately sin, knowing that your place in heaven is guaranteed. Because all that indicates is that you never truly gave your heart to God. See, you can't do these things. You say, well, yes, I can. I'm a human being. I can do what I want. But I tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, the power of the Holy Spirit and the conviction of the Holy Spirit is such that you don't want to. If this is something that you're not manifesting and understanding right now, then you need to pray. And you need to give your heart to Jesus, truly, 100%, mind, body, and soul, to Jesus Christ, relinquishing everything of this world, that doesn't mean to say you've got to give it up and sell it and be poor. It means don't hold on to it so tightly. Come to Jesus open-handed, okay? If you're struggling with this, let someone know that you know, that you know in your heart can help you. And the one that can truly help you is the helper that Jesus Christ sent. He said, I must go, else he cannot come. Ask the Holy Spirit to convict your heart. To enter into you and give you that conviction and love for Jesus Christ. That you will relinquish all hold upon these earthly things and that you will pursue matters of heaven, matters above, and lay up your treasures in heaven. You see, there's such a tug. There's an allegorical painting of, uh, it, 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 in a church in Europe, of Christians ascending up a ladder, climbing up into heaven. And there's demons jumping up and trying to grab hold of them and pull them back down to earth. Okay, there is a constant bombardment of evil. And it doesn't masquerade as evil. Of course it doesn't. It masquerades as good things, things that you like, things that you enjoy, things that you love, things that you want. Don't make these things a priority in your life. Don't seek after those things. Seek after the kingdom of God and enjoy the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Paid a price. What did I say the other day? 
few weeks ago. All right, yeah. Imagine somebody came and paid off your mortgage. You know, I mean, Trish and I got together later in life. You know, we've got a mortgage. You know, if, if someone came and paid that mortgage off, they would be our best friend. You know, I think I'm going to be 95 when I finish paying my mortgage. <laughs> I mean, you know. Imagine someone paid your mortgage, bought your house for you, said, here's the deeds. You now own your own little kingdom. Well, Jesus Christ did that for us. He paid the price that we couldn't pay. And he's giving us the deeds to heaven. We now own a mansion in heaven that he went to prepare. I've gone to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I would not have told you. He is the bridegroom. The father is going to tell the bridegroom to fetch his bride, the church, the collective body of the church. And just like in the Galilean wedding, the bridegroom is preparing a place to raise his family, to bring his family all together, his brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ acknowledges us as brothers and sisters. We are co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven with Jesus Christ. Isn't that worth aiming for? Have a good and restful days, my friends. Try to put yourselves into some thought process about the kingdom of heaven. All right, there's... Don't go reading books about, oh, I spent, I don't know, whatever it is, so many days or hours or minutes in heaven, or I spent so many days in hell. No, no, they're, they're, <coughs> no, don't read those. Read the Bible. Read the description of heaven in the Bible. Read what God wants us to know, all right? Not what somebody who's made a lot of money out of selling books wants you to know, all right? There's books out there that says, oh, if there's going to be roller coasters in heaven. Really? I don't see that in the Bible anywhere. <laughs> Come on, let's get real here. And reality is in the Bible. God's Word. It is all God-breathed. Spirit-inspired man to write these words. Spirit-inspired man to put the Bible together and assemble it. The Spirit enabled man to find the Dead Sea Scrolls and confirm that what was written thousands of years ago, as far back as two and a half thousand years ago, we have written confirmation. We have the book of Isaiah in its entirety. I mean, what a powerful book. I mean, one of the major, major prophets that validate what we read today is the same. The same words. What book? What What movie have you ever watched that's been re redone? is the same as the previous movie. Man wants to change and enhance, but the Bible has never been because the Holy Spirit controls it. It is the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. Remember, I love you too. God loves you more. Have a great day and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.